Today we have a, um, a lecture on uh, IBAR refereeing and judging in um, international competitions. So we have uh, one of our top international referee judges, IBA uh, Colonel Ashok. Thank you, and a very good evening to all of you. And uh, I am uh, Colonel Sai Ashok here, IBA Trisha referee judge, and uh, for today's topic on refereeing and judging. Today's topic is on uh, refereeing and judging in IBA competitions. A unique topic. A strange topic and a very controversial topic if I say it's between the coaches and the referee judges because on most of the occasions the what the coaches agree the referee and judges may not agree and what the referee and judges may agree the coaches will obviously never agree to in most of the occasions with this as a slight background let me go let me start the presentation now with that as a just a short background, we come to the main presentation of today's uh, lecture. It's on refereeing and judging. To understand this, let us first try to understand key, what do you mean by a referee? In this lecture, I'm not going to talk about the rules and regulations because the coaches are much aware about it because each and every day you practice and you teach your students based on the same disciplines. So we're just trying to understand key, what do you mean by a referee? What are the basic qualities which a referee should possess? Precautions. In each and every action a referee takes, please do understand that the safety is the most important thing which a referee has to keep in mind. The first quality which a referee is being taught in each and every IBA workshop is to understand that safety is the first and the foremost thing which you should take care of. Rules, regulations, other things come subsequently later. The next thing is being an adjudicator. As a referee, you're trying to adjudicate between two people in a very closely contested bout, in which punches are being thrown with less than a speed of microseconds. They are trying to adjudicate between the two people who are trying to box themselves in the distance of 20 by 20. At the same time, you are also having a pedant for rules. Each and every rule in the rule book is being strictly followed. Each and every type of step, let it be the right step or wrong step, is closely scrutinized. At the same time, it is same to both the red corner as well as the blue corner. As a referee, you don't have any two different thoughts. You don't have any two different methods of judging somebody. If it is wrong for red, it is the same way it is wrong for blue. To cut it short, you have to be a stickler for rules. If as a referee, if you have precautions, if you are an adjudicator, at the same time, if you have a pedant for rules and you're equitable to all and you're a stickler for rules, then why is it that most of the time you're always at the receiving end of what the coaches shout at you? Why is that? Well, yes, with, and I do understand each and every coach has it in mind at some point or the other. With this, we'll try to understand okay, what is exactly the bone of contention through which the referee and the seconds differ. Bone of contention. Bone of contention in this aspect means where as a referee, my viewpoint, my thinking, my methods, my rules, and my implementation does not actually match with the way a second thinks. In what all aspects does it think? In what all aspects do we feel it differs? Now, but before we try to get into what all aspects differs between a coach and a referee, we'll just try to understand what exactly does a referee go through before he comes into the first day of a competition. I'm not sure whether everybody is sanguine of the fact that before a referee enters into a competition, there are various phases he has to go through. The first and the foremost thing is a pre-day seminar. As you are completely aware, a referee comes from different places, different geographical locations. Somebody, somebody must be coming with a different frame of mind. Somebody must be having a very fantastic competition behind him. Somebody must have had an off day in the office. Or somebody must be having some kind of a personal problems. So with so many different backgrounds, getting all of them together at least two to three days prior to a competition and then having a seminar is a very important thing and which is done in all IBA competitions. This seminar brings all the RJs in a single common platform. Each and every rules are again gone through. Each and every regulations are again practiced and any new changes in rules is again discussed. At the same time, 
any deviation which has happened during the course of that particular year or any lessons to be learned in which a previous referee or a previous judge must have committed something in which the other RJs could have learned. All these kind of aspects are discussed in the pre-day seminar. As a result, the referee is warmed up, is mentally fresh again on what to expect the very next day. The next aspect is the pre bout preparation. With the new rules coming in, it is very clear that the referee gets at least around 10 to 15 minutes before his detail when he comes to know, 10 to 15 minutes before the start of the bout, that he has been assigned the job of a referee or a judge. As a result, the referee is able to make himself physically fit at the same time, mentally tuned up on what all he should be expecting in his bouts. Now, this aspect is very important due to the sheer fact that once a referee gets into the ring, he's all by himself because there are two people equally contesting, throwing everything at each other with two seconds at the reach and every other corner, red corner and the blue corner, trying to throw whatever ideas they have in their mind with the audience at the back. With such a lot of chaos and confusion happening, the only silence where it remains is in the 20 feet by 20 feet. So to remain mentally fit and physically, it is very important for a referee to go through all the pre-bout physical and mental preparation. Once the referee finishes off with his pre-bout mental and physical preparation and then he goes through the bout, the referee's job doesn't get over. For all the coaches to understand that the referee's job just starts after the bout is over. Once the referee finishes bout, once he comes back, there is always a post-bout analysis. You can, in our case, you can call it a video analysis or whatever you say where each and every action of the referee is put under the scan. It is basically done by the RJ evaluators. If you see, for example, in the recently concluded uh, Olympic qualifiers, which happened in uh, uh, Dakar in Senegal and even in London, and uh, even the one which happened in uh, Amman. I'm just quoting these few examples which were, because these were the recent ones. Most of the decisions almost were perfect and what the coaches had almost uh, wanted. Now, this was truly possible because of the fact the RJ evaluators were being completely scrutinizing the results of all the referees in the way they were conducting themselves, in the way warnings and cautions were being given, in the way each and every aspect of a complete 15 minutes was going through in those three rounds. With this, as a pre bout preparation and what all used to happen for the referee judges, let me now go to the main aspect, the bone of contention. That is the problem aspect, what the coaches feel and how the referee reacts. Now the first thing, moment where the coaches feel that they have been denied a particular right is in the fouls aspect. See, as a referee, you have to be a stickler, as I said in the first slide, you have to be a stickler for rules. But at the same time, there are so many other things which a referee should also consider. If it is a foul, a referee has the right to understand whether it's a minor foul or whether it's a major foul or whether it's a flagrant foul. And also, a referee can take the decision whether the foul happened accidentally or whether there was a clear distance when the foul was happening so as to ignore any kind of a caution or a warning. But at the same time, please do understand, as a second or as a coach, when you are looking at the same aspect from a different angle, you tend to think different you tend to feel that you have been denied a particular foul which should have been awarded to your boxer's opponent. But the referee, whom I said is equitable, feels that no, this is not the aspect. So this is one of the contention which arises. The next contention is the cautions and the warnings. Please do understand, the referee's main job is to ensure a clean and a smooth conduct of the ball. He is not there to keep on penalizing for things which can be ignored which can be kept away so as to ensure a smooth running of the boxing game. But please do understand, I'm not saying do cut short on any clear fouls, no. There are certain fouls, like for example, if a boxer ducks or bends his head below the belt line, but from a distance, far away from his opponent, there is no need to call a stop. This is a clear example. In the same case, there are other examples when you feel a boxer would have been, you can understand that a boxer would have not been holding but due to other boxes' action, this could have been the cause or a reaction for it. So as a result, whatever cautions and the warnings which a referee may give, is to understand that it is not exactly how the board progresses. It is to ensure 
that there is a smooth conduct of all bows. In the same time, cautions. The number of cautions which a referee can give is at the discretion of the referee. There is no clear rule or there is no rule which says that after three cautions, the referee has to give a warning. No. But this again irritates the coaches because sometimes there's a very close ball and they feel that the referee has given four cautions or sometimes even five cautions. But what they do not understand is the referee sees the gravity of the situation and he sees if does the situation really merit a warning. And even, uh, even after a warning has been given, it is not necessary for a, again a repetition of the foul. The referee will again go back to a warning. No. The referee can again give a caution to a particular foul even though a warning has been given before. So this is all to clearly say that for the coaches to understand that the cautions are completely at the discretion of the referee. The main job of the referee is to ensure a smooth conduct of a particular ball. The next thing which comes into play is the medical attention. As I told you on the first slide, the first and the basic quality of a referee is the safety of a boxer. There have been certain instances where a boxer suffers a cut or where there is bleeding which occurs to a boxer. And the referee calls time and then takes the particular boxer to the corner. So again, this creates a double kind of a confusion in the mind of the seconds or the coaches. They start again shouting at the referee saying that, was there a need? Was there a requirement? The boxer could have continued. There is no bleeding. But please do understand again the first and basic criteria what was said. Referee, he can stop as many bouts as long as he feels it is for the need of a boxer. As long as he feels that it is for the safety of a boxer. At the end of the day, when a referee feels that if he has done the bout, some good feeling or some good thoughts by stopping the bout, so as to ensure the safety of the boxer, Please do understand, it is for the betterment of that particular boxer so that at least in the future he can be fit enough to compete in subsequent competitions. And also, with the recent Edgar, with the recent rules in which Edgar has been removed, it is imperative that cuts and uh, all those kind of bleedings which happens, each and every medical attention is being given to the boxers and the safety is given a lot of priority these days, more than what used to happen before. The next point which comes is the knockdowns. Sometimes, again, the same aspect, we could have seen that the referee starts a particular count, one, two, and sometimes the referee waves off the ball. Again, it again becomes a bone of contention between the coaches and the referee, indicating why, why should you have stopped the particular ball? Please do understand that I'm not contesting in a particular situation or I'm not quoting any particular example, but the referee has a very closer view. The referee has a very clear view of the boxer better than anybody who's watching that particular duel. So when the referee is starting his count, he's clearly able to observe the boxer. He's able to observe the boxer, what exactly he's looking at. He's able to see him completely. He's able to see his eyes. He's also able to see his knees, whether they are wobbling. or He's also able to see whether the boxer is able to maintain his composure all along. If the boxer is able to do that, then the referee obviously will not have any problem. But there have been situations where you could have seen that the boxer is unable to start even after come one, two, and the referee waves off the ball. Because in the opinion of the referee, again I am saying, please do understand, the referee is the adjudicator of the box. Now you have to respect that. As the adjudicator, he takes a call that the boxer is not in a situation to continue keeping the safety precautions in mind. So in that case, it is obviously necessary for everybody to understand that referee has done it in the interest of the boxer. Now sometimes there are a couple of counts which have been given. And sometimes the referee stops the board after only two counts. So these things, well, discussions can keep on going, discussions can keep on varying. But in the opinion of the referee, if the referee feels that the boxer has received more punishment. And if the board continues, in his opinion, he will be exposed to more punishment. He has a right. He has all the right to stop the ball, seeing that the boxer is receiving more punishment. The next slide is the foul illustration. When you come to the foul illustration, over a period of time, so many rules have been brought into vogue, so many rules have changed, so many new things have come into place. Along with it, the indication of the referee for a particular foul has also gone through a sea of change. Because of which, it has been made necessary for all the referee and judges to follow a strict 
and a common platform in the way they indicate a particular form. So this becomes important because while there is a language barrier nowadays, it is very imperative that the referee shows a clear signal of what a particular foul is. For example, for holding. Example, if a boxer if a boxer is holding with his gloves inside and locking his elbow, then the referee should also be able to indicate the clear indication of the foul. As a result, you now what IBA has done is IBA has brought across a clear indication of all type of fouls which have been brought across, and they have made it uniform for all the referee and judges to strictly follow it, to abide by it. And they also made it compulsory in all their refresher courses and all their IBA one star, two star, and the three star RJ seminars. As a result, the coach is also able to understand ki why was that a foul or why is this boxer being given a caution or a warning. If a referee just says, red, no holding, red, no holding, the boxer or the seconds in the corner might not be able to understand ki what exactly is the reason for the stoppage. But if a referee shows a clear spell, then the seconds or the coach can understand, yes, my boxer is committing a foul. It has done it once, he has done it twice. So he does it again the third time, well, he will obviously receive a warning. Now, this is one of the good initiatives which has been taken, where they have made a uniform signal all across the board for the easy understanding of the boxer and the coaches. The next point, according to my slide, this is the last point what I felt would be the bone of contention between the referee and the judges, but I'm very sure I'm not, because there will be a lot of uh, issues which a referee may agree and a coach may not agree, and which a coach may agree and a referee may not agree. The next point is the minor, major and the flagrant faults. A coach, it is very important to know the difference between the minor faults, the major faults and the flagrant faults. Now, why is it important for a coach to understand this? Because a boxer may get a caution, may or may not get a warning or will get a warning based on the difference in these faults. And also, he can be directly disqualified for infringing on any of the rules, for example, like flagrant rules. Like example, a boxer goes through a head clash and it was intentional. And if there was no cut, then obviously the boxer would be given, the offender would be given a warning. But if there is a cut, it is straight on a disqualification. In that case, the coach might ask him why it could have been a warning. No, I'm just seeing one of the examples like that. There are so many flagrant faults and so many major faults which are there, which a coach should also go to. Now, once a coach understands that these are the dynamics on which referee works his way through, these are the dynamics on which the referee officiates, it will also be easy for the coach to understand the gambit of the game. The coach can easily predict okay, what exactly is going to go through. Now, as a coach, you might feel at certain point that there was a clear indication of a particular wrongdoing which would have happened to a ref, which would happen to you. So you feel offended? Yes, very rightly so. You have trained your boxer for 365 days in a year. You have all the right to do so. But believe you me, you are not the only one who is going to be alone because. There is somebody who might inform you earlier, the RJ evaluator. Nowadays, believe you me, nowadays, the complete system of officiating has become so stringent that there is not an iota of a doubt that the referee can easily walk away. And uh, I'm very sure most of all our IBA international coaches and even our uh, uh, foreign coach, Mr. Santiago, will agree that they would have seen certain referees not coming up again in subsequent sessions or maybe in subsequent competitions. Well, the reason is certain stringent measures have been implemented by the uh, organization in which the RJ evaluators is one of the most important things. The first and the foremost thing is why like any referee, when you in the evaluator feel that there was some kind of a mistake on the referee's part, which was unpardonable, then obviously you will not have any duty for that particular session. The referee will be suspended for the session. For example, if a referee commits a foul or commits a very major or a blatant mistake on the first session of the bout, there are all the more reasons that the same referee will not be repeated for any other bout for subsequent sessions in the evening session. The second thing is that over a period of time, where, for example, a competition is for 10 days, the referee does it, goes for around two days, three days, four days, the referee is being observed. Over a period of time, the evaluators are able to make a picture of okay, what kind of a material is this referee made of. 
The referees who get into the semi-final and the final balls are the ones who have a better reading of the ball, who have a better treatment of the ball, and who are able to understand and implement the rules and regulations as per the requirement of the ball. That is how the qualification process for a referee remains even in competition. So a referee is obviously always under this scan. And the other thing which comes into play is the suspension. Now, if the referee who has been uh, suspended for a particular session does not change his way, then there are obviously certain measures which happen like suspension for subsequent competitions, which are really being strictly followed. There have been cases where I do not want to quote anybody where certain referees have been moved away because of certain grave mistakes which have been done by them. And also, the commission, the RJ commission is very strict on the ethics. The RJ Ethics Commission has been so implementing so many rules and regulations that the disciplinary commission has always has its hands full in so many other aspects involving the ethical reasons. Now, as a coach, you can understand the referee does not walk away if he does any mistake. Please do understand it. It is very easy to say that, yeah, the referee has finished his job. That's it, it's over for him. There's nobody to do a random check on him. No. As a referee, as a coach, your job is over once the boat is over. But as a referee, once you go back to RJ Lodge, the music starts. Now, the, the most important thing in these contradictions is the other aspect where a coach will obviously contradict with a referee. Example, the last 10 seconds of a round. Please do understand that the last 10 seconds of a round are very crucial for everybody. It is crucial for the referee because 2 minutes and 50 seconds are over. The next 10 seconds have to go on smoothly without any unnecessary stoppages. The referee will want it to continue. It is very important for the boxers because the last 10 seconds matter a lot. Ask any coach, he will say yes. It can make or break a decision of that particular round. So the 10 seconds matters. For a coach, yes, all his complete effort of 2 minutes and 50 seconds depends on those 10 seconds of a round. And for the judges, for somebody who's sitting at a different angle, who couldn't see or who couldn't predict what exactly had been a clear outcome, these 10 seconds matter a lot. So during these 10 seconds of a round, the referee ensures that there are no unnecessary stoppages. The referee ensures that even if there is a cut and if he sees blood oozing, the referee sometimes feels, yes, there is obviously a cut man in the seconds. He can take care of the situation. The referee feels, that if a boxer is holding, the referee feels, that we have to stop the boat, do we have to break the boat? Because if it does so, there will be a wastage of 7 to 8 seconds. Because if a referee stops the boat, he has to indicate to the offender the reason for him stopping the boat. So because of all these things, the referee ignores certain unwanted stoppages. But the seconds, seconds who feels that he has been deprived of certain things, or feel the other way wrong. So this is one important contradiction which obviously happens. The next thing which comes into play is the last round. First round, decision has been made by the judges. Second round, decision has been made by the judges. The third round, the most important round for a very close ball. Very keenly contested ball. And there have been a couple of situations where a boxer has resulted to holding, exam, for example, to holding. The other coach, the boxer who has been held, he might feel the referee is not giving a warning. He might feel that it's a clear indication of a foul. But believe me, you have to understand this, that a warning or a reason which can be stepped aside will change the complete decision of a particular ball. One warning will change the course of a decision. So the referee actually sees it, that does the offender is doing it, whether wantedly, whether intentionally, or was it just due to a course of action that the boxer had got entangled. The referee sees so many angles to it, and after that he takes a decision. And also, it is important for the referee to understand that during the last 10 seconds of the bout, please do understand, the last 10 seconds of the bout, he has to ensure in a very closely contested bout, the same rules and regulations which are applied for the last 10 seconds of a round, that make it very clear, less amount of stoppages, have a clear flow of the bout, so that the judges are able to indicate a clear winner. These, again, are a few of the contradictions which could have come up to me, which, which had come up to me between the referee and uh, the coach. Judging, very simple, uh, nothing much. First and most important quality, be fair enough. No doubts about it. The, the judge sees only two things, red or blue. 
and whomsoever according to him is a winner indicates him. At the same time, he should be competent enough to differentiate between clear quality and uh, competent blows so as to indicate a clear winner. At the same time, more than the referee, the judge is always under the scanner. Believe you me, a decision of 4-1, I can understand what goes in the mind of the judge who has scored that one. And most of you would have been judges can also think, even let it be even a trial. Even a coach would have been sitting in the trial in a national camp can understand if it is a 7-1 decision or 8-1 decision, how do you feel? Believe you me, in the same way, each and every referee judges feels that way. Nobody wants to be on that one. Everybody wants to be that 5-0. So, every feels like that. So, I just wanted to say that each and every referee judge is under this scan. As a result, he ensures that there is transparent judging in each and every aspect. How does the coach differ from the judges? In what all aspects? Well, basically, very simple. It's the decisions. Sometimes the decisions do not go in the way the coach expects. Well, yes, most of the major cases, I do agree to it. Because the coach sees the bout from a different angle. The judge sees the bout from a different angle, number one. A coach has a lot of emotional attachment, which you all should agree to it. As a judge, we should not have, I should not say we do not have, but we should not have any kind of an emotional attachment. And the next thing is, please do understand, whenever you're seeing a bout, you obviously see through your boxer's eyes. That is, you see how much punches that your boxer is throwing and not how many punches your boxer punches are being landed on your boxer. So when you start seeing a bout in that aspect, I as a judge would personally feel that yes, there can be slight deviations in the way the opinion of a particular round of a particular bout can go. As a result, whatever decision which a judge is made, unless and until it's not an open and a clear bout, there is controversy which will amount. So as a result, the 5-0 decisions which actually happen, which in most of the cases, there will never be contested. But the reasons where the contest comes into play is in the split decisions. That is, the 4-1 decisions and the 3-2 decisions. When you talk about the 4-1 decisions, there have been few cases in which uh, the referee who has scored 1 has also been turned right by the evaluators. Well, even in most of the cases, like even in coaches, as coaches, you would have gone to various competitions where you would have felt that in a decision of 3-2, the two must have been right. Well, it is bound to happen, you know. The reasons why it is bound to happen is because there are five judges are scoring the ball. And five judges are looking for the first and most important quality of scoring. And that is, first thing you want to see a clear punches, clear visibility, clear landing of the blows without any infringement of the rules. All these things matter. And there are five different judges sitting at five different angles and trying to judge a particular ball. So as a result, the deviation is bent to occur. For example, if you see judge number two and three, most of the time, judge number two and three will obviously score the same. The reason being, judge two and three sit seven next to each other. As a result, the way they look at a ball is also meant to be the same. That is why these deviations occur. Well, yes, so many hearts get burnt by 4-1 and even by 3-2. But there are certain deviations which we should also accept. But we can clearly say the number of split decisions has actually come down in the recent qualifiers. If you see the number of percentages which have been taken across, it has actually come down. Now, one reason why most of them try to bring it out is just that the quality of the evaluators trying to say the right things to the judges and also the evaluators being evaluated by the observers. So there is not one, two, but three. Three different levels of being three different uh, layers where each and every system tries to filter a correct decision. So as a result, the right decision is meant to come. But believe you me, even a 4-1 decision is not wrong. So many of us have been at the receiving end, which we also would agree. But at the same time, we should also understand that most of these decisions might be caused due to certain one or two blows only and not much of a major difference. Now, this is not a contention one. This is just a normal rule changes one which have just been implemented. Now, these things have been done as far as the qualifiers are concerned. There is no clear uh, written rule which says that they can be continued after the qualifiers or after the Olympics. It's not clear. 
But presently, yes, these things are being done up. One is clean shaven. Yes, these things have been removed. The boxer is no more required to be clean shaven nowadays. Whatever the reasons were there, we discussed it even with the doctors over there in uh, I, uh, during the qualifiers. They said that it does not have any problem with them. They said it's okay, fine. And so they ensured that the boxer's uh, requirement of being clean shaven has been removed. The next thing which has come into play is that the uh, confusion regarding the RJS neutrality. Now because of that, they have tried to be more transparent, which has resulted in the RJ draw sheet being signed by the draw commissioner, which has been newly implemented. And the next thing, even though it has been worked for some time, but still hardly a year or so, where the spitting of the gum sheet intentionally, it will obviously result in a direct warning. And the last one which has been done up is that the ringside doctor may treat a particular injury that is be treated a bleeding for a, a bleeding, no, bleeding in a nose or a cut for a maximum of one minute only and only once per bout per boxer. That is for example, if a red corner gets injured, gets a cut and as a referee, you take him to the doctor, indicate to the deputy technical delegate the reason for the cut the doctor has 60 seconds to treat the wound. If the doctor, doctor is not able to do it, then whatever is the future or the further course of action as indicated by the referee to the deputy technical delegate will be involved. Now suppose if a boxer is being treated and it finishes in 40 seconds, he comes back and he box. And again a cut opens up. Again you take him to the doctor. It is not 20 seconds. Again it is exactly as it is one minute. It is 60 seconds are available to the doctor to uh, make that cut all right. Uh, with this, I've tried to include, I know, see, listen, like, this is like a Pandora's box. Nothing is coming to an end. The, the kind of uh, confrontation which a coach will have, kind of opinion which a coach will have on anything will not come to an end. And a kind of uh, justification which a referee or a judge will try to give will never please a coach. Both have their own view of mind, both have their own opinions, and that as long as it is for the betterment of boxing, well, yes, we will have a good uh, sessions. I have finished with my lecture, Mr. Santiago, and uh, any questions, please? Uh, Mr. Santiago, any questions, please? Yes. Um, so, those who have questions, you put in the chat. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much for, for the lecture. Very, very informative and interesting. Um, I will. I, I will start with the question, a mind question. Yeah, I'm expecting it. Please shoot. Uh, in, in my opinion, um, some some countries or some boxers, they systematically bend the rules a little bit, uh, like continue punching after every stop, after every break, after every bell, one one or two extra punches. And, and in my opinion. The, the um, referee is very, very lenient, like is nothing. But that makes the other box will have to reply on, on, on that. So if he punches me after the, the, the stop, okay, next time I, I will do it again. If he punches me on the back of the head, I will have to give on the, on the back of the head. Um, any opinion on, I have, I have spoken with this, with, with both IOC and, and, uh, and AIBA, and, and uh, they always say, okay, we will, we will take more action. Uh, I don't know. Do they discuss these things on the meetings? Well, yes. The first thing, apart from the safety of a boxer, which is being discussed, the next thing is to be a strong referee inside the ring. And if you remember, we had a discussion of the same with uh, certain people in uh, Tokyo in the test events. Yes. Exactly, the same point. Now, during these seminars, it is being clearly shown not only the punching part, even the holding part, which happens even after the referee says stop, stop. Even after two times, the boxer again continues it. That is where the referee becomes strong and straight away goes for a warning. It happened a couple of times. If you go through the European qualifiers, you can actually see those occasions where the referee did not go for the three necessary, basic necessary three cautions. Just after the first or the second one, straight away went for a warning. The reasons were there, the boxers were getting too smart. So it is actually, it comes down to, the, to being a strong referee. But at the same time, you can't expect each and every referee to be strong. Right? You should also be training your boxer. For example, when a referee says stop, your boxer cannot drop your guard down. So obviously, that's a basic. The other boxer might punch it. 
referee, whatever decision the referee might take, that could be different. But there are certain steps which we as a boxer should also be doing it. I know that that other guy has made a mistake as a referee. Yes, if I would win and the referee, I'll certainly go for a direct warning. And believe you me, certain steps are being implemented. They are making it strong. Okay, Mr. Mr. Gupta has one question. Hi, good evening, Kana Shok. Going for a long time. Ah, uh, yeah. No, I boy is doing each and everything uh, to give the fair judgment to the boxers and coaches. I have one question. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in the earlier time, the IWA was following one very strict rule that all the official, one referee and five judges, will be from the different continents. Only maximum two, one referee or one judge can yes. be treated from the same continent. Yes. So when uh, they are changing any rule, there is a logic behind it uh, to change that rule. Sir, true. Uh, and it was uh, quite assuring also that the people, they were having a little faith that the people, they are from the different places, there will not be any cheating. Sir, and secondly, the ideology of the uh, referee or official, I will say referee and judges also were kept in mind. Because yes. at that time, the two ideologies were dominating the world. One was capitalist USA ruled countries like South Korea, France, England. The other one was Cuba, Russia, GDR, Bulgaria, uh, uh, Yugoslavia. There were a lot of uh, uh, mishaps happening, uh, uh, what I say. So, so these, uh, these two points were kept definitely in the mind for deputing of the official. Now, both of these have been eliminated. Uh, what is the cause behind it? <laughs> Sir, cause, the reason why the cause has been eliminated or why, believe you me, I, I do not know, I am not clear about it. But yes, like whatever you said is actually true as far as all these continental qualifiers are being happening now. There are no same referee and judges from yes, the same here, here, I want to intercept her. Now, qualifier is one thing. But when it comes to the Olympics, qualifier means anybody who qualifies is a satisfied. Here, yes. the boxers are not coming for a gold, silver, or bronze medal. Uh, you have to keep one that extra point in your mind. When you are going qualifying after the semi final, I have seen the Olympic champion. They are giving the walkover because they were satisfied and they wanted to keep something strategy for the uh, coming Olympics. What? When I upgraded, they were given the five stars. <laughs> so, this means you take the advantage to, to give them some incentive, take them back, and so that happened. So many like water has flown through, like the river has gone through. They did not stop. You also understand it. Changes are being done. Transparency is the question now, and I am very sure you'll also understand that the way in which we are progressing, transparency is the only word in each and every aspect which we are looking at. It. But believe you me, like you are privy to so many competitions over a period of past around four to six months. I believe transparency was always there. And as far as the Olympics are concerned, well, sir, till the time I am not that I cannot answer your question. You are much experienced no, no, than us in those aspects. Know, because yes. uh, uh, one thing before doing, we have little satisfaction. Now, I have seen in some of the bouts, I uh, uh, evaluate each end. I sit at family and uh, see the performance of the judges, that which judges are favoring which countries or which are not. What once you, uh, once sir, you are you doing three judges from the same ideology, now, for example, we have a bout with China. These judges are coming from a North Korea, coming from Cuba. I mean, there is a, some lobby, which we know, even Pakistan. Uh, they are definitely arise a doubt in your mind that these uh, nations, they have a social and political link with that nation, which have a more effect because they are taking help from them. And it is always as a strong point in their mind. So that's why if you see the second point of the rule changes, this thing has been done specifically for that, where the RJ draw sheet is finally again be vetted by the draw commission. So there are certain steps you are trying to do. This is just my point that when you are attending the meeting, this <laughs> five <laughs> continents <laughs> plus referee. And uh, this point yeah, must yeah. be followed because uh, uh, boxing at the Olympics is having only one danger. Boxing is, uh, uh, I think, like that the most. What uh, many times I have heard from the big mouths, from the IOC, from the leading countries of the world, if it will be eliminated from the Olympics any day, it will be only due to the officiating. 
I believe we'll not see that day, sir. That's fine. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, we'll take some questions from the audience here. Um, H. Bala, ringside doctor treating a boxer for his injury 25 seconds in first round. Then the situation of injury in third round also means the balance 35 seconds. Can you utilize second time in the same bout? No, I told you also. No, it is clear 60 seconds, which is required. So 60 seconds. Yeah, 60 seconds. But again, it is referee sees again the stoppages are again increasing. The referee may clearly say RSC because the box is again continuously going. Stoppage continues happening. The referee has the right to say RSC. So just to, to clarify, so if the doctor has seen the boxer once, the next time yeah. the referee cannot send him to the doctor. He, he will have to stop the bout. If he, he... no, the, the referee can the referee as the referee can take it to the doctor. The referee also has the right to say RSC, seeing the kind of gravity of the Can injury. Can take him to the doctor he, second time? He can, he can, yes, he can. Pragya Pant, if once a boxer cut down in the ring first time and referee take boxers to doctor and he takes one minute for treatment uh, and allow him to play, after that the boxer again is injured by a right blow. So in this situation, can referee stop the bout or should he take the boxer to the doctor? I think it's a similar question. Yeah, I'll answer it, yes. Question, is there any changes, chances to revoke the headgear rule for boxer future events by AIBA? Nope, we do not know anything because it will be done by the, the medical commission has to first bring it into notice. But as far as the injury cuts are concerned, nobody's aware how it is going to. Uh, Raval Padmana, <clears throat> sir, please explain remedies and contradiction slide once again in Hindi, if possible. Uh, remedies or uh, and remedies and what is it? Contradictions. And contradictions. Okay. Uh, okay. Remedies. Remedies. मतलब कहने का मतलब है अगर कोई referee होता है हमेशा coach ये सोचता है कि board खत्म हो गया referee ने दो भी काम करा तीन रो खत्म कर दिया इसके बाद referee कोई पूछता ही नहीं Referee is the one who does that in the ring. Always keep this in mind. This is the one who does that in the ring. But it doesn't happen like that. There are many situations on the referees. After the board is finished, there are many things that have to go through. For example, if any referee does a wrong and has seen the RG evaluation and has seen the wrong 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 and has seen the wrong. एक इम्पोर्टेंट गलती जिसको नहीं करना चाहिए वो गलती उन्होंने किया और दोबारा भी कभी किया है तो उस दौरान टेक्निकल डिप्टी टेक्निकल डेलीगेट रेफरी को उस सेशन के लिए सस्पेंड कर सकता है उसके बाद अगर कोई भी कंपटीशन चलता है आठ दिन नौ दस दिन एक एक दिन रेफरी को इवेल्युएट किया जाता है उन्होंने कितना सही काम किया कितना अच्छा काम किया इसी चीज के निर्भर पर ही रेफरी सेमीफाइनल और फाइनल में जाता है अगर कोई भी रेफरी अपनी गलतियों को दोबारा दोहराता है सस्पेंशन का नाम लगता है और रेफरी जो है बाकी कंपटीशंस में उनको बुलाया भी नहीं जाता है जब फिर सस्पेंड हो जाते हैं और अगर रेफरी के एथिकल्स यानी कि रेफरी के जो कैरेक्टर के ऊपर कोई भी अगर सवाल उठता है वो सही प्रूव किया जाता है कमिशन जो आयबा के हैं वो उस रेफरी के ऊपर एक्शन भी ले� फास्ट नोम में किस किस मध्य हमेशा अलग-अलग नजर अंदाज किस में होता है तो अगर देखा जाए तो हर राउंड के जो 10 सेकेंड लास्ट 10 सेकेंड होते हैं रेफरी यही कोशिश करता है कि बॉक्स मूवी चले किसी भी कारण में कोई रुकावट ना पड़े अगर कोई बॉक्सर होल्डिंग भी कर रहा है रेफरी यही कोशिश करता है कि रेफर दस सेकेंड वेस्ट ना हो ये इसलिए जरूरी है क्योंकि जब क्रॉस बोर्ड होता है एक-एक बॉक्सर जब एक पंच भी महीने रखता है तो अगर रेफरी स्टॉप करता है तो बोर्ड वैसे मर जाएगा अगर रेफरी उस बोर्ड को रुके और अपना रूल समझाने लगता है तो कदम हो जाएगा और जब क्रॉस बोर्ड होता है जल्दी यही कोशि� पहला राउंड दूसरा होने के बाद लास्ट राउंड बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट है दोनों बॉक्सर उस राउंड को जीतने की कोशिश करते हैं अगर उस राउंड पे रेफरी अगर वार्निंग देता है तो पूरा जो बाउट का डिसीजन ही बदल जाता है 
तो इसीलिए रेफरी कोशिश करते हैं बिना मतलब का जो वार्निंग है जिससे कोई बॉक्सर के जो अफन नहीं करता बॉक्सर के ऊपर कोई फॉल नहीं होता लेकिन जो अलग सा कोई माइनर फॉल्स है तो रेफरी उन सारे फॉल्स को नजरअंदाज कर मतलब जितनी कंटिन्यू करा देते मेरी बात अगेन सुनिएगा ध्यान से वो फॉल्स जिनसे बॉक्सर को कोई फॉल ना हो जिनके बॉक्सर कोई चोट ना हो जो कि जो रेगुलर स्मूथ कंट्रोल ऑफ दउट में इंडिया में ना हो ऐसे फॉल्स रेफरी नजरअंदाज कर देता की लास्ट राउंड विदाउट क्लियर कट चले एंड दूसरा लास्ट टेन सेकेंड ऑफ दउट इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज एक बहुत डिस्टेंस उसके ऊपर ही निर्भर है पूरा उसके ऊपर लग जाता है बॉक्सर लग जाता है जजेस भी जान से देखते हैं अब उस दर और रेफरी उस बॉल को स्टॉप करके करने की कोशिश करता है दूसरा जो कोच है वो उससे रेफरी क्यों गलती कर रहा है रेफरी वार्निंग क्यों नहीं दे रहा है स्टॉप करके क्यों नहीं कर रहा रेफरी तो इसलिए हमेशा रेफरी क्या करते हैं क्लियर इंडिकेशन ऑफ दिनर इज बींग मेड कोच आई बिलीव आई एबल टू जस्टिफाईज Sir, in Tokyo 2020 African qualification, uh, one red box wore 10 ounce gloves, 10 ounce gloves, and the blue box wore 12 ounce gloves. The bout ended RSC in favor of red. Who is responsible for this? Does is the referee responsible or equipment supervisor for issuing 12 ounce for 52 kilo? See, I'm not sure where it happened and how it happened. You know, I'm not sure about it. I don't know who said it. But uh, the equipment manager obviously he checks it up and he comes into the ring. And the referee also checks the gloves. Really, as a referee, if you ask me, I also go and check the gloves to do it. So it depends on the generally has to be taken. But I'm not sure whether it happened or not. And I would add that the coaches and boxer himself also have to be little, little, little awake. Um, Suspend the coaches I, and I have, the boxers. I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, um, you say. The referee obviously has how to go in with a neutral mind of of both boxers, but when the bout starts and and one of the boxers is constantly using every foul in the book, and the other one is trying to box fair, and the bout is closed, but the boxer who who is doing all this uh, small fouling coming in with the, with the head holding and roughing very rough, he due to to him being able to use that in his favor he's tipping the bout in in his favor um what what are the instructions to to the referee should, should they should they like okay no this boxer i have to protect he's he's trying to box or should they just like no we we treat them both equally coach uh, moving dangerously is also a fault right if i'm if i'm moving dangerously Like I may or I may not make all this difference. That's a different aspect. Like I am taking my head more dangerously inside. It's a fault. It can cause trouble the other boxer. So as a referee, believe me, as a referee, our main duty is to ensure that the fault does not happen, that the injury does not happen. So as a result, that walk, that boxer will be stopped. He'll be warned by the referee, and that is being told each and every session that is being repeated because that of all the head guards and without all these things. Every session, every after every bout, a referee is being told, "Don't get into a situation. Just try to remove the situation. Try to predict it. What will happen if a boxer, suppose if a boxer is continuously going inside, continuously going, so you might predict that chances are that he might get a headbutt. So it is a duty of the referee, and that is what is being taught to us in each and every uh, session. What about the the warning? Uh, you say the, uh, the referee. We, uh, Does not want to issue a warning in the in the last round or so, but in my opinion, no, no, no. It is like what the referee does not show. The referee can show warning. No, the referee can show warning. The referee will show warning. If the foul is a foul, you cannot uh, deviate from foul is a foul. But the thing is that the referee tries to understand the situation. For example, there are a couple of questions which the referee would have given in the second round. And in the third round, it there might be three more cautions for the same hook. example. The coach, the other coach, that if three more cautions to the blue for holding, the red coach might feel the blue deserve a warning. Yeah. So in that, I'm not those situations. I'm not talking about a situation where it's a clear foul. Don't give a foul. No, not at all. Sorry, please. Don't take it like that. Yeah, but if we have red boxer has won, winning two rounds, blue boxer wins one round. But red boxer gives gets a warning. 
So, so then we have 28-28. As a judge, yep. as a judge, do you wash your hands and say, okay, I'll go with the, the one who won the two rounds? Or do you penalize him? No, he got the warning, so he should lose the bout. You're asking my is five judges, no, five different minds, no, five different you, opinions. Uh, if you, you, is that up to the individual judge, or do you get instructions? Like, no. In no, case, it, it, it is clearly up to the individual judge. He, according to him, whom does he think? Let the, the warning is different. Okay? You penalize him. Warning, you penalize him. Yeah. Apart from that, from the judge, who has won two rounds? Whom do you think is a clear judge? Uh, okay, question here. Just one thing. I have seen so many times in national championships, referees speak to the second, clean the respective corner. Why? You want me to answer it? Yes. Um, I don't, See, I don't... the seconds are given. I think you know, you know it already also. Yes, you don't say it. When there is 60 seconds interval time, nobody says anything. The 60 second is for the coach and the boxers. We don't interrupt in during that time at all. Maybe after that, if there's some water or something, and nowadays you already have those assistants sitting next to you. Yeah. So they are the ones who clean. I, I don't want to see any reason why. Yeah, there should be there should be assistants in the corner who take care of that, so the coach can concentrate yeah. on, on his yeah. job. Um. <laughs> Question: Sort of Gua. Can a coach request the supervisor to change referee and judge if the referee and judge from the same unit where the boxer is playing? That is like in, in India. In India, it happens. He doesn't have to ask for it. Like, see, because see, we come from such a big country, there are so many affiliations somewhere, or especially like you belong to some state or then some position are there. That is why the boxers are there to differentiate and to filter these things. In international competitions, you don't see such kind of things at all. But in national competition, it happens. And we ensure that there is neutrality. We do that. So you were there in the last national. You should have answered this question. Chitam. No, I cannot unmute. No, I cannot unmute. You there? Hello, sir. Yes, you have a question? Yes, yes, yes sir. That question was asked by me only. Sir, uh, in the recent uh, African qualifier, okay, sir. So over there, what I saw is uh, in the bout number four between uh, Lebanon and. Uh, okay, we have already answered that question. We we don't yeah, know, but, but probably the but, equipment but, manager. Sir, yes, sir. I have. Uh, I want to ask who is responsible for uh, that bout because boxer with twelve on gloves got Aris in the third round. And boxer with ten on gloves uh, yes. won the bout. Yes. But uh, is the uh, has the referee has to be responsible for that bout or the equipment manager or who? Because equipment manager has given the twelve on gloves to the blue boxer, so definitely he will wear twelve on gloves only. The referee has to check when they get inside the uh, ring. Referee has to check the gloves, and as it is fifty-two kg, how the boxer can wear uh, twelve on gloves against the ten? Ten on gloves boxer who is in the rare corner. Mistakes can happen. Uh, can happen anywhere. Some people are human. Human mistake. It can happen yes. in three hundred bouts. Somebody can make a mistake. I, I, I will answer for uh, Chitambram. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Now uh, you have noticed, and it went unnoticed to the referee. Yes. One is having red, or one is having blue. The red was having uh, twelve ounces, and the blue was having. 10 ounces, understand? Yes, sir. And the, uh, you, you were telling the uh, person who was wearing the 12 ounce and he won the bout? No, uh, 10 ounce won the bout, 12 ounce uh, got RSC in the third round. Yeah. yeah, the person who won the bout, he was on a legal aspect. Now, if anything goes unnoticed by the official, first it was the duty of the blue corner, if they notice anything, they should lodge a complaint or they should go, go give it in writing. Not as a complaint uh, uh, that uh, he is wearing separate gloves uh, or the uh, trade defense gloves are there. If that could not take place, the person who has won according to the rule, he was better and he was uh, uh, wearing the uh, correct gloves, then what can happen? He lost the bout and he lost the bout. Yes, sir. sir uh, it's uh, not he was on the wrong side. Uh, if a person who is on the winner's side 
there also uh, the uh, you have to give your uh, uh, mean uh, not as a complaint uh, you have to uh, give for the uh, that something happened somewhere around uh, you have to bring in the notice of the uh, supervisor uh, यस सर सर मैं इतना ही पूछना चाहता था कि uh, इतने बड़े इवेंट में ये जो क्वालिफाइंग इवेंट था ओलंपिक्स का अफ्रीकन कॉन्टिनेंट तो इसमें मतलब uh, इस ऐसी भी चीजें हो सकती है तो ये मतलब आई आई गिव यू वन एग्जांपल दिस इज ए क्वालिफाइंग एट द वर्ल्ड चैंपियनशिप वन ऑफ द फेलोज ही यूज द रेजर इन हिज ग्लव्स एंड हिज ओपोनेंट ही गॉट अ कट and the bout was stopped rsc by the referee uh, when they have the end of the session uh, the cleaner or the sweeper whatever you want to say he came uh, to clean the ring tarpaulin the razor was found there he reported the same to the organizer and the matter went to the uh, 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 jury at that time it was jury uh, they took that razor and it went to the medical commission they took out the last bout program what was the decision and one decision was rsc uh, due to cut and that fellow was called and he was sent for a medical examination and uh, uh, it was medically proved that it was not a cut of a punch it was a cut of a razor he was disqualified if the things come in a proper way the punishment can be given if the things are not coming into the notice of the concerned person nobody can do anything uh, what you are telling if there it has been on the record they will take the action on the dressing room or maybe on the referee also maybe little caution and they but when until or unless the things are coming on the record nothing can happen when a boxer loses the competition because of a referee he goes home why why the referee after a, a big mistake we, we will not be disqualified from the tournament but he can be You, you, hey, it is being done. I I will not put an example, but it is being done after the African qualifiers and it is all the things are being done. Then yeah. the referee goes home. Uh, yeah, the pro problem is uh, after a couple of days we have no referee judges left if, <laughs> if they are not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I say it's very it's very lenient to to. <clears throat> to uh, scream at the referee it's very easy to complain to the referee judges but those who have problems you take the referee judges course and you start officiating yourself instead of complaining on on the others because it's it's a very uh, difficult task most difficult task. and it's easy to stay from the outside and complaining to the one who is uh, who is above but you have to be there also Raval Padmanab can an IBA qualified official perform a second duty or a coach duty for the competition or in which he or she is not doing official's duty i think is speaking at national level no generally gender, don't do that even in national level we don't do that we don't entertain such things mm. and it is clearly mentioned in the uh, IBA rules and regulations once you are uh, Qualified and referee judge, you cannot uh, don the gloves of a uh, coach or assistant. Question from Puskar Raj: What are the key things to make good harmony between referee and judges? What are the key things? It should not be. Many times they have misunderstand each other. I don't know. <laughs> there should not be an harmony, you know. Then you'll not be. Then you'll not be able to think. Yeah, that's true. Because the coach is emotionally attached, and the referee judge should not be emotionally attached. So there should not be an harmony. There should be differences. Uh, one question: uh, clean shaven. Now you said, but that is only in AIBA qual uh, Olympic qualifiers and Olympics. The AIBA rules they have not changed, or no? They are still. They, it has not still been uh, invoked. That's what I've been made to believe. I'm not. I'm not the person to exact situation. But maybe after the after December, I think we'll come to know. How will I be? Yeah. Um, and uh, how is the, the split decisions? Uh, I'm thinking sometimes if there is a split decision for me, it's positive because that means at least it was not fixed. If if it's five zero, then maybe sometimes you feel like they knew before the bout how, what they would score. 
if there is a 4-1 or 3-2, at least you said, okay, they, they did not all agree before the bout who is the winner. Uh, believe me, it's, it's a very uh, good question, coach. You're talking about split. I'm talking about split decisions even in rounds. Like even in one round, if there are split decisions, and if you do not have a other judge as a partner, straight away you're penalized by the evaluator. That's what was happening in the qualifiers. As a result, each and every round started getting more important. So believe you me, that they are being penalized like anything. Um. Okay, I think we had a, a great session. We had uh, some good questions and uh, we got, got some good answers. Um, it's almost 5 p.m. We have one more session on um, referee judging on uh, Friday. Uh, so we'll be back on, on yeah. this uh, subject. Okay, Cornell. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you very much. much. Thank you, everybody. See you again tomorrow.